Upon the appearance of the ruined blade, the whole auction fell into a state of chaos and confusion. That was because of the words that the blonde hair woman said. As the woman pointed out that the sword was recently made, it suggests that the crafter is at this very capital right now, or at the very least nearby. What hit the nail in the coffin was that it wasn't he made by the Craftbinder family, which was the only known capable runesmiths in the whole kingdom. But suddenly, out of literally nowhere another runesmith had shown up in the whole kingdom. Since most people were regulars on this auction, this hit them completely unprepared. It was similar to how you will go to school and expecting the same thing to happen over and over again, but on your last day of school, you see usually serious teachers going dressing like a clown and behaving like one. These people were caught off guard. Of course, for such a valuable item that you dear guest is seeing from the auction prepared what would be a worthy test to showcase the rune's ability. Moving to the side, the bulgy men came dragging a cage with Dem. Wag. A high-pitched roar sounded through the whole auction. Inside the cage was what was known as a Night Stalker. The Night Stalker was an infamous creature for its ability to hunt at the night. Most of the Night Stalkers reached four meters tall with some rare causes of five meters. Their body resembled that of a gorilla with this head and arms showing bat features like their pitch black wings and big ears with a nibble yet powerful tail. They were swift and deadly natural hunters of the night and a nightmare to fight against. Not only did they posse night vision, but they could extend their body and jump at you before you knew it. To think that the auction would catch a night stalker. Just by looking at it makes me nervous already. Of course, the creature was scary enough to most of the people here feel tense, but that was also a part of the show. The presentation will be made from a hired adventure named Sarah Scorched. A man with bright red hair wearing a scaled armor with a sheath on the left hip. Now, Sir Sarahs, please proceed. Bowing slightly towards the Sarahs, the blonde girl gently gave him the sword and walked quietly away from the stage. Wog. Wadji chach ch 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 Sir Sarahs, we are letting it out. Let the beast out, do not worry. Opening the cage, the Night Stalker imminently rushed out of the cage and jumped to quickly fly away as this instincts told him for it to crash to the ground while looking confused. Wog. Wag. Looking at these arms, the Night Stalker saw these wings be torn apart. These eyes turned bloodshot red searching were to throw this anger at. Looking at the juice human in front of him, this mouth was full of saliva. Extending this body, it jumped at the human with the extreme speed with these talon-like nails raised at him. Hmm. This time sword has a nice balance to it. Sarah's nodded with a look of admiration towards the sword. As for you, you are too loud. Just as the Night Stalker was going to cut Sarah's into hundreds of pieces, the human dodged this jump by a hair's breadth and moved behind him. Asterisk bomb. Before the Night Stalker could even realize, this big bulgy arm fell to the ground followed by what seemed an endless stream of blood. Wog. Wag. Noticing that he had lost a piece of himself, the beast eyes seemed to have lost their light with only an enraged beast remaining there. Dear guest, as some might have noticed, the sword has the enchantment of a bleed effect. Wadash. Wag dash. Wag. With this mouth opened abnormally, the beast now saw only to devour and kill. Hmph. A beast will always remain as a beast. Mindless. With the Night Stalker losing all these senses, Sarah's could easily predict this way of path and dodge accordingly. Dodging successfully, Sarah's delivered the finishing blow. With a swing towards these chest sides, burning flames emerged which burned the Night Stalkers inside and outside at the same time. Wog. Wog. After wriggling this body out of pain, the Night Stalker eyes regained their light, for only death to remove this light as fast as he had regained it. And as you can see, the sword can also produce flames with no need of any of my mana thanks to the fire crystal. Moving towards the fallen arm of the Night Stalker, Sarah's picked it up and showed it to this audience. As for what I guess you guys are most curious about is the rune. The rune of the sword's edge and make it sharper without having any negative effects. Although simple, cutting that thick arm of the Night Stalker was as easy as cutting some butter. Don T let the simplicity of the rune fool you. Letting the people digest what he just said, Sarah slowly said. As for the starting price, it will be dash. 2,000. 2,100. Damn it. 2,200 in favor from my house. 
You guys don't even know the starting price and you already bidding. Damn it, let me finish at least although Sarah's grumbled internally, he already knew that this was going to happen. With another bidding war starting far greater than the one before, many people started throwing money and false promises to another, hoping to get an opportunity to get such a sword. Of course, most of those who did that were the stupid ones. The smart ones who knew the worth of the item have already left the auction. General, why are we leaving already? Aren't you interested in that sword? Merrick asked while looking behind as he was getting further and further away from that awesome sword. Seeing the drool forming in this soldier's mouth, the general shook this head disappointed. Merrick, what do you think it is the most valuable point that this sword represents? Scratching this head, Merrick replied, Mmm, the added strength from the rune. Sigh, I will have to take a look at your academic score when I go back. Look here. Buying this weapon from these auctions isn't worth it at all. Most people will see it as a novelty cause of the rarity of the runes, wasting money for one sword to where we can get a better enchantment one would be better. Huh, if that were the case, General, then why ask me to report it to the higher-ups? Annoyed by this stupidity, the elderly man started explaining. One sword at such quality will be useless for the army. What we need isn't the sword, but the actual source. Stunned, Merrick hurriedly said. So, you want to find the runesmith behind the sword? Now you finally up to speed, huh? If you understood, move you a hashtag S and investigate who made the rune. Found him no matter the cost. An hour later outside the auction. Young master, do you think it was a wise idea to buy this sword? A man in this middle thirty said with a butler suit on. Of course it was. This sword will be the key to my goal, said a man around this twenty. Young master, isn't thirty-two hundred gold a little too much? With a frown on his face, the following you master replied with a fierce tone. You should be fully aware of my situation. With me being the last child and the less talented out of my siblings, I have almost to no change beating my siblings for the head family position. I spent my all remaining funds on the sword to finally after so many years to have a chance. Walking towards this carriage, he slammed the door and went inside. I ain't in the mood to discuss this anymore. Bring me back home. Yes, asterisk hi. With the horses moving the carriage, the young master bought the box from the side and opened it slowly. With this now rune sword, I will finally have the change dash. The carriage suddenly stopped, making him almost drop this newly bought sword. Hey, when did I say that you can stop? I don't pay you a foha. Opening the door of the carriage, instead of this aid to greet him was instead a flying dagger flying right to this face. Without even realizing what just happened, the young noble dropped death instantly. Appearing in front of him were cloaked figures that quickly grapes the box that had the rune sword and left. After making sure that they were safe, with a voice that couldn't tell this gender the figure said to this college, Hey, call the union. Our job is done. Yes. Activating this communion device, the other figure said with the same kind of voice, Our mission has been completed. Make sure to pay us accordingly. Yes, yes. It will be done the moment you bring that sword to the Union. After doing that, I would like to put another job on you guys. And the will be. I would like you to find a person for us. Find the runesmith that made this rune. Find him no matter what. After a short moment of silence, the cloaked figure replied, It will be done. Currently at the same time at the Oru Fire Smith. You acquired 2,000 XP. Finally finished with the helmet. At a good rating at that, too. Stretching these bones, Danzel stands up and looks outside the window. Ah, uh, it's so peaceful here. Now that I put a whole two runes at my helmet, I wonder how it looks with rune vision on. Without wasting another thought, I activated rune vision to put my idea to practice. It seems like I was right, Danzel said after deactivating this rune vision. The previous bright green light on the helmet had already dimmed by putting one single rune in. But now that I put the new rune vis in my helmet, the green light completely had faded with a yellow color to replace this place. Learning that made me once again aware that there was a limit on how many runes I can place in a piece of equipment. For now, it wasn't too much of a problem, but by the rate, I gain XP from the passive training. If I were to spend them on learning runes, then I might be forced to have to throw my current helmet so that I can replace it with new runes. 
I will have to at least unlock enough runes to fully engrave in all my equipment first though, since now I found a pretty reliable way of making XP I obviously wanted to maximize as my gains. Although the dwarf promised me that he will let me enchant this stuff, there is a limit on that. Upon last time I saw the dwarf making a new item, it took him around two to three hours to finish it. Such a feat of being able to create a whole weapon under three hours might be a great achievement among other blacksmiths. If it s a great feat or not, I don't know. After all, I am simply ignorant of stuff like blacksmithing. Nevertheless, this speed will be nowhere enough for me. Just creating a single rune took me around an hour, and that was me doing it for the first time. The rune essay that took me before an hour has already been shorted into 40 minutes, and that is because of some hours of training. Every time I carved a rune with my mana, the better I got. It was similar to painting the same kind of picture over and over again. At some point, the previous difficult parts of the painting will become easier to the point where you will not even consider them as the difficult part. Dot T. If we consider the part where every piece of equipment can at least hold two runes for the time being, sooner or later the dwarf will be out of stuff to put runes on. Sigh, I guess I will cross the bridge when the time comes, but for now. Looking from the window, a small cloaked figure appeared outside the shop. I guess I should take my income firsthand. Leaving the room towards downstairs, the cloaked figure entered the shop. How was it? Danzel said while sitting at the reception's table. Putting the cloak to the side, Garak put a frown on his face, slightly annoyed that Danzel was sitting on this favorite chair. We will talk about that down to the workshop. So move you a hashtag S before I make you so. Ho? Huh? You will. Raising from the seat a sudden killing intent seemed to engulf the hole, making the room feel colder than it should be. Garak's face took a turn for the worst from sensing the sudden killing intent. From this perspective, the surroundings darken with Danzel figure seemingly growing larger by the second. You. Ha ha ha. You had to see your face, it was just a joke. Like it wasn't he there, to begin with, the killing intent faded away and everything seemed to turn back to normal. Didn't he say that we are going to disguise this down there? Why are you still spacing out? Leaving the spacing out dwarf, Danzel went downstairs. Joke, Garak said while holding this shaking hand. The thing that Danzel considered a joke was in Garak's opinion the joke itself. For someone to admit such bloodlust has to either be a mass murderer or an extremely powerful person. And for such dense blood lust to form to simply play a joke on him, that itself would Garak find funny. In what mess did I bring myself into this time around? The fact that this guy is seeking my items for this equipment should speak loud and clear that he doesn't he hold the strength to generate such blood lust. If I were to consider this fact that should mean, crap, I work together with a mass murderer. Of course, the dwarf obviously misunderstood something. Calling Danzel a mass murderer with the number of people he killed would be too out of the stretch. The effect that Garak was talking about were only possible if you slain more than a thousand people or if you had the strength to cut a whole house in half without breaking a sweat. What actually had happened was that Danzel used Sin of Wrath consciously, making the dwarf believe that he was either of the two options. Although the idea of working together with a murderer didn't have much of an appeal, the idea of working with a runesmith was enough to overshadow this fear. Walking down to the workshop, Garak saw Danzel waiting for him there. And here I thought you wouldn't come. Ignoring Danzel's remark, Garak went right into the business. The auction went better than it thought it would, as per our mutual agreement we both get a half of how it sold. Bringing this hand in this pocket, he bought out a large brown bag. Asterisk thurid. Letting the bag go, a metal sound could be heard. That's your share. 1,600 gold. Thanks for, wait what? Did I hear wrong? Daniel asked himself. The rune sword was bought for 3,200. I was surprised as well. Daniel froze while trying to comprehend the meaning behind the dwarf's words. And there wasn't much to understand in all honestly. As so you are telling me that a single sword went for that much? It wasn't even a good rune. The dwarf shrugged my question of and replied, Well, you might be right, but most of the gold comes from this rarity. I see. Taking the bag full of gold coins in my hand, the first thing that I realized was how heavy the bag was. You could probably bash someone's head with this. 
Feeling the bag with my hand bought me a similar feeling to when I had over 100,000 XP in my storage. The feeling of being rich. Hey Garak, you mentioned that this auction house sells magic scrolls too, right? Around how much does one cost? Hmm, depends on the spell, I guess. It should be around 500 to 1,000 gold coins for the lowest tier spells. Finding any higher tier spells is next to impossible. Are you planning to become a spellcaster or YUS? Garak replied while looking at me strangely. I am merely interested in learning magic. Staying on the topic, why only low tier spells or higher ones? Sigh, I almost forgot that you aren't from here. The reason is cause it's forbidden not only in law, but the law of the spellcasters such as mages. Sharing their secrets is being frowned upon, where only low tier spells can be learned with enough training. I see. Danzel words carried some disappointment in them. It's a pity that I can't learn the good stuff right away. That problem can easily be solved by just throwing XP at them. Excited from the idea of learning new spells, I hurriedly asked the dwarf when the next auction will come. Sadly, though, the dwarf had to crusty already forming dreams in my mind. Sorry, Danzel, but you have to wait until next week before we can go to the auction. I felt like someone poured cold water on top of me. Why is that? Of course, I wasn't going to give up so easily without a proper explanation. For the safety of course, currently you are one of the most famous people in the capital, or rather they know you as the anonymous runesmith. Oh! Well, I can somewhat guess why. The dwarf took before this time to explain to me in detail why the professional runesmith is worth it. I have the power to open a second market of ruined goods on my own. Many people would like to either restrain or use me for their gain, after all. That's what most, if not all, humans are. Well, since we are going to have to wait until the last week, what shall we do? Standing up from this seat, Garak said, Isn't it obvious? We are going to work ourselves to death this week. Hearing that I put a small grin on my face. Working myself to death might be a little hard for me. Such an arrangement didn't bother me at all. I welcomed it. This week's XP harvest will be plentiful. With that said, a week full of runesmithing began. In the Royal Academy. In a large flat room where it was enough to hold up to 500 people. Standing to the side of this room were a group of students that were admiring a battle of two people. The two students were standing inside a white circle, which was the arena that the battle was taking a place. One of them had a wooden sword in his hand while the other held a staff with a small blue crystal in. The one holding the sword dashed right towards this opponent by using this life force to enchant these legs. The other student, Samuel Craftbinder tapping this stuff to the ground, a magic circle appeared and the next moment earth spikes formed at the predicted path of the other student. While the other students were in amazement from Samuel S. casting speed, what surprised them more was that the other student managed to dodge the sudden earth spikes like it was nothing. Damn it, Alan. You aren't supposed to dodge that. Taking a step back to gain some distance, Samuel started to prepare for this next spell. Was I? Being one meter out of this reach, Alan Darcy put this whole strength in this legs and arms to swing at Samuel. Unexpectedly to Alan, a three-meter earth wall raised under Samuel's legs, saving him from the pain that was about to come. Jumping from the other side of the wall, Samuel deactivated this earth wall, which soon turned into hundreds of stones. Another three magic circles appeared around him. Casting the spell, earth shots, three slightly sharp stones formed up in the air, with soon to be launched towards Alan. When Samuel had finally thought he had one, he was soon flabbergasted by Alan dodging two out of three shots and crashing the last one with this wooden sword. How can a piece of wood survive my earth shot? Seeing Alan approaching him without even breaking a sweat made Samuel snap out of this confusion and quickly prepare for this next spell, only to realize how short their distance was to each other. Got you. Swinging this wooden sword, Alan aimed for Samuel's head. Realizing the dread that was coming to this face, Samuel quickly moved to the side while bending this body, barely managing to dodge the swing. Knowing that he was doomed at Alan S. next swing, he jumped and tried to kick Alan S. face as a last-ditch effort. Unfortunately for him, though, Alan managed to block this kick effortlessly. Wadash, before being able to finish the sentence, Samuel soon came to greet the cold floor. Are you all right, Samuel? Asked Alan's concern. Ah, that hurt. 
How were you even able to dodge that? Simple because of your lack of knowledge and ability, student Craftfinder. Like out of nowhere, a man wearing the teacher uniform of the Royal Academia appeared in the middle of them. The man looked around this mid-30s with a height of 1.9 meters. This body looked like it was just built by muscles alone, which made the teacher's uniform barely able to hold these muscles at by. What does she mean by that, teacher? Samuel asked slightly annoyed, being told he was weak seemed to strike a nerve on him. It means every word what I say. Don T misunderstand my words of you being weak, student Craftfinder. The capabilities that you two had shown were amazing and even astonishing. But the result of your loss is simply because of your professional difference. The men made a short pause for the young man to understand these words. So what you are saying is that I lost because I was a spellcaster and not a melee fighter like Alan. Does that mean that spellcasters are weaker than melee fighters? Samuel replied without taking a single breath through this whole question. Sighing out loud, the teacher started to explain as he knew that Samuel was going to ask this question. Samuel, Don T, you ever dare to ask that question in front of any spellcaster? As for your question, the answer is neither yes nor no. Compared to Alan that follows the path of a warrior, you follow the path of a spellcaster. The early stage for a warrior is to train their body and techniques where a spellcaster is in a period of gathering knowledge. Do you know why the kick of yours failed at the very end? Scratching this back of the neck, Samuel hesitantly replied, Because Alan is stronger. That is indeed the case, but you got it wrong. If we were to compare your magic abilities to Alan, you should be stronger, and yet you lose. For that, there is a single reason. The reason being that Alan can dodge your attacks is because he can perceive these surroundings faster than you. What looked to you fast seems slow before Alan. The reasoning behind it was quite the obvious one. With a stronger and faster body, you will be capable to react much quicker compared to a spellcaster with a weak body. Although Samuel understood this point, he couldn't help but feel bitter from inside. If that were the case, teacher, what should I do? He asked with a slightly desperate tone. Do not be the concern of that. Those who practice the ways of magic for long enough can unlock an ability so-called mana vision. Once you have gotten yourself that ability, you will be able to keep up with the fast movement of warriors. Asterisk ding doing ding. Hearing that break time has already come, the teacher told all the students to go to their breaks except this too. Don't forget you too. Practice makes one the master. You too have immense talent which the kingdom will be proud to have. Keep up the hard work as, without practice, even genius fails to raise. Having spent this whole wisdom of the week together with this five minutes of this break, the teacher left the two boys to go. Both Alan and Samuel went to them to avoid all the stalkers that were hunting Samuel down, with mainly the girls being that. Sigh, finally able to relax, said Samuel while greetings this bed. Hey Samuel, do you want and practice together this afternoon? Asked Alan while cleaning this wooden sword. Ah, uh, sorry, but I can't today. My father told me to go in a black auction this afternoon. Replied Samuel with an apologetic look. Auction? But we aren't allowed to leave the academy without any good reason. Well, it was an order from my father, so if I were to refuse the next time I go to my house, I will have to deal with my father. After a few seconds of gathering these thoughts, an idea came across Alan's mind. If that were the case... Would you mind me tagging along? Sure. Might as well make the trip less boring with you, Samuel said excitedly. Hmm. Shouldn't we hide? Our face then? Seeing how famous you are with the girls here, I worry how it will be outside, said Alan. Oh, come on. It wasn't like I wanted to turn out like this. Jokes aside, though, I have already thought of that. Bringing out a bag under this bed, inside it was revealed to have two cloaks big enough to fit both of their body and two masks. One mask resembled that of a crow's head with the other mask being that of a demon with two teeth being bigger than they should. We simply have to use those. Currently in the black auction. Hey, Danzel. You heard anything of what I just said? No, looking at all the people gathered here, I was somehow surprised. Ever since I came to the capital, I haven't seen so many people in a single place. Moreover, almost everyone had different looking clothing on. Since most people that I saw were Garak and commoners, I always thought it was normal for them to wear similar clothes. I guess the commoners don't have much of a luxury to dress around. That or everyone here is a hired clown. Stopping spacing out already. And the very least try to lie. 
German shouted at me, which resulted in us getting some attention. Sigh, per me. I heard you crystal clear. While you go registered our items, I will wait here. That's what you want, right? Danzel said while making the dwarf aware of the attention that we are getting. Cough, cough, yeah. Wait here until I go register our item. Moving the carriage that we rented, Garak went towards the reception. It has been already a week since we sold the rune sword, but today that is going to change. The whole past week I and Garak spend our time making ruined items no one stop. Except for the moments that I pretended to go for a walk and eat outside and Garak need to sleep. We were working no stop. I even got myself a good chunk of XP inside my storage. I am curious if there would be any magic scrolls to buy. I ain't seeing a list of the items to come to. Maybe I should ask someone. Looking around me on who I should ask for advice, a group of two people caught my attention. Hmm. Let's ask those guys. Walking towards the group in front of me, I gently asked the one wearing a crow on. Excuse me, could I make a quick question? Surprised by the unknown man's appearance, the crow mask hastily turned around while quickly moving this hand towards this hip to where the sword wear. This quick and decisive reaction might have looked somewhat intimidating if the tip of the crown mask hadn't t hit directly at the fully armored knight. The scene made Danzel almost burst out of laughter if it were in t for the fact that he wanted to ask some questions. Ack. Looking at the poor guy trying to fix this mask result in an awkward silence between us. Let us ignore the bird and go for the demon. So, would you mind if I were to ask you some questions? Sure. While both of us ignored the panicked crow mask, I felt like I and the demon mask were on the same page, which made me more comfortable talking with him. But upon noting that the heat in my body was slightly raising, my mood turned back as it was before. These guys are humans. It wasn't he like I picked those guys randomly among the hundred people here to ask questions. Since every single one of them was humans, speaking with them would only ruin my mood. I hoped that those two guys were of a different race similar to a dwarf. A small figure and rare enough to need to hide your face. But to think that they are just a bunch of kids. I was searching for a list of the items that will be shown in today's auction, but I can't seem to find anything of that shorts, Daniel asked. Hey, mister, is it by any chance your first time here in this auctions? Daniel was dazed by the kid with the demon mask asking if it was this first time. F sharp CK. First Garak and now this kid. How can they guess that I am not from here? Danzel calmed this mind and quickly recovered from this day's state. Hmm. Was it that obvious? Nevertheless, could you answer my question? Since your bird friend of yours doesn't seem to have taken a liking in me. Even though that crow mask hadn't said anything yet, this posture alone was screaming for me to get lost. Cheeky brat, if it weren't for the fact that there are so many people around, I would even beat the crap out of you. If I were hostile, to begin with, I wouldn't he have come so casually to your guys after all. Well, there s i s n t much to answer, to begin with. The auction doesn't t reveal these items so casually. Most people here including us have connections that inform us about some of the auction items. Ah crap, he says that the list is for the rich. Realizing what the demon mask said, I felt like someone hit my skull. I guess I will have to hope on my luck that there is something for me inside the auction. Asking that dwarf would probably be useless too since he is always in that damn forge. Sigh, I didn't t want to ask but trying wouldn't t hurt. By including us, do you guys by any chance know the list? Shaking this head, the demon mask said. Not really, we just came to see if the ongoing rumors are true or not. Rumors? What kind of rumors? Mind filling me in since I am new here? Sorry, Dash, before the demon mask seemed about to reject my request. He was shortly cut by this companion. Ack, you are so annoying. It s about the ruined weapon that showed up last week, of course. Being clueless has this limits. Both Danzel and the demon mask were surprised by the bird finally opening this beak and lash out at me. Danzel, though, was more surprised at what the crow mask mentioned in this outburst. Does that guy talk about the rune sword that Garak went out to sell? That s dash. Danzel, here you are. I have already registered our stuff in. Like out of thin smoke, the dwarf Garak appeared out of nowhere with a cloud of annoyance following him. Sigh. Lower your voice already. I am on my way. Sighing out loud, I turned around and went towards the screaming dwarf. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the info, you too. Here, catch. 
Throwing the two masked kids one gold each, I went towards our reserved seats on the auction. I dot. Looking at the scratched gold coin that both the crow and the demon mask received, they both had the same thing in mind. You cheap sake. Giving a single gold coin to a noble and pressing to be smug about it. At least give us a good quality coin. Using that will bring more shame than it s worth. Dot. Currently inside the auction. All kinds of voices went through the whole place. Some were raising their bids on the item they wanted while others were just pure out of frustration of losing that particular item. Since the very start of the auction, it has been like this. Of course in different levels at that. Of course in different levels at that. According to Garak, the auction always puts the resources at the start, and then they go to the rarer and most unusual items. But if you were to ask me, the start was nothing more than a game for the nobles. They simply threw money at the floor while laughing at their actual loss. The 20 lower-class crystals that were supposed to cost at best 15 gold coins went for 40 gold coins in the end. Simple because two nobles didn't tea want to give in and consider it a humiliation if they were in tea to buy it after being challenged. My only question watching that was what do two guys drunk before coming here to laugh at their loss? I don't tea care where this guy wastes this money at. But at least use it effectively, damn it. The feeling felt like watching your teammate in a game selling their item just to buy the same item again. What exactly did you think about doing that? If you were going to tell me that you were drunk, I would even totally believe you. Anyway, we are getting out of point. What I wanted to say is that is damn boring inside here. Watching all those guys throwing more money than I had in my damn wallet at useless stuff made me both frustrated and bored. Heck, at some point that blonde lady over there bought a large egg that was supposed to be of a wyvern. Everyone inside couldn't help but be surprised at the possibility of owning their damn wyvern. I too was surprised. Until I noticed the dead mana inside the damn egg. The fetus in their dead. There is no way that someone is going to buy tea. Shortly after, it was sold for 1,000 gold. Hey, Garak, when is this going to end again? Danzel asked the dwarf with this cold voice. Hmm. Until we sell our stock, I guess? Why? Sigh. At this point, I could only curse internally and give myself in the endless boredom to come. And for our next item that had made this appearance a week ago, we are glad to show our guests many variations of ruined weapons and armor. They are 25 of each category, so do not fret. We will slowly show them until the end of the auction. Asterisk, oh. What the? Ha ha ha. You sound exactly like I did a week ago, Garak said. The moment the blonde girl showed our ruined items, everyone went into an uproar, which honestly surprised me. So you were telling me that it was like that? Danzel asked. No, it was worse, Garak said with a grin on this face. Shortly after our discussion, the bidding soon began to take place. The auction, of course, wasn't tea stupid enough to sell everything in one go. Doing that will scare everyone who wasn't tea interested away after all. They instead sell three to five at a time and then going to another product. This reason alone made people want to stay longer and see if anything good was left for them. And at last, an interesting item finally showed up. For the next item, we got the magic scroll of Mana Arms, written personally by an archmage himself when he was younger. The starting price is by 300 gold. Looking at the scroll and comparing it with the one in the cave, the difference was too great. Neither holes nor dirt was to see in the paper. The paper looked like it was written and made at the same time. Hey, Garak, do you know by any chance what the spell Mana Arms is? Huh? You interested in that? The dwarf said with a frown on this face. Well, it isn't for combat, that's for sure. If I were to describe it, I would say that it is a quality of life type of spell. The spell simple generates two floating arms made out of your mana. Their only purpose is to bring or drag your stuff. The weight that they can hold is extremely limited. Hearing Garak's explanation, I got the basic idea of the spell, Mana Arms. Although it hadn't any combat capabilities, it still sounds useful. I am going to buy it, Daniel said firmly. Huh? Garak looked at him confused. But I didn't care. 500 gold. I shout while holding my fingers high like a peace sign. What I learned today in this auction was better to pay more at the start before you struck the nerve of a proud full idiot who is ready to throw this money for fun. No one higher than 500 gold. The magic scroll will be sold for 500 at 3, 2, 1. Sold. 
and to my surprise, I managed to buy it with no resistance to see. I frowned slightly at that. Did I overpay? I asked the dwarf. With this hand holding this mouth, Garak replied, Guess. Damn it. I did overpay. At least I got it. The reason why no one bidded on that scroll was that the auction was about to end, and everyone here still wanted to give it a try to get the ruined items. The fact that the spell container in the scroll didn't help much either. The time for the last ruined items shortly came after which bought another bidding frenzy on everyone with enough money to spend on. With our items being the last of the auction, Danzel and Garak went to get their buys and gold before shortly leaving for the workshop. How much did we made? Daniel asked while already reading the scroll. Hmm, about 12,000 gold. Not as good as I had thought it would. Brake said with a depressed look. I of course was stupefied. Seriously? While those two wearing some identical robes were moving towards the Oru Fire Smith, they weren't able to see two hiding figures stalking them in the dark. Add them to the list, said one of the figures while both of them were slowly disappearing from the shadows. Returning to the workshop, Danzel and Garak decided to call it a day. Since it was already midnight by now, working on something wouldn't tea make much sense. At least that was Garak's case. He has long ago gone into a state of fatigue in both mind and body. The dark circles under this eyes with this messy beard all betrayed the fact that he was tired. And it would even be weird if he wasn't tea. Since the past week, he didn't tea do much except work, eat, and sleep. Danzel even told him to take it easy and sleep more. He didn't he say that because he was feeling pity from this old dwarf, but rather a jealousy. Although this undead body of his had quite some good traits on, it wasn't he everything rainbows and rays of sunshine. The two biggest complaints that I had in this undead body would probably be this weight and the incapability to sleep. The first has already been resolved with my armor adding in the weight that I originally had in T but the latter was much more difficult to fix, if not impossible. Most of the time I didn't tea mind the fact that I couldn't tea sleep, but sometimes when I was bored it felt like torture. Nonetheless, though we getting out of topic. The reason why Garak started to work so hard was probably because of me. He must have already noticed it. The fact that I am working faster than he was. Wasting the sleep for something like this, stupid. Danzel genuinely meant that. Although he liked to be as much efficient as possible with these methods, he didn't tea mind if that guy would take it easier. After all, what Danzel was doing was basically rushing to accomplish something while he holds immortality in his hands. I should probably distract myself with something before Sin of Wrath comes to play. Having said that, the perfect idea to pass time came at me. Status. Status. Name. Rue Danzel. Level. 20. Class. Undead Guardian LV1. Subclass, Runesmith of Undeath LV.1. Health, 3850-3850. Mana, 484-484. Attribute points, 0. Attributes, Strength 90, Agility 70, Intelligence 44, Endurance 69. Talents, Superior Undead, Sin of Wrath, Reinforced Soul, Superior Unique Concionis. Rune Vision, Dead Rune Knowledge. Skills, Intermediate Weapon Master LV.1, Undeath Corruption LV.1, Dash LV.1, Shield Bash LV.4, Wind Blade LV.3, Sense Danger LV.3, Curse of Vigor LV.1, Piercing LV.1. Remark, A Undead of Superior Strength. Though you completely merging your life force with your undeath nature, you now became an undead fueled with pure dead mana and hate on the living. Such an achievement can only be seen by either talented or long-lived undead. XP, 13625. What else is better than spending your wallet? Danzel said with a mischievous grin on this face. From the previous 4625 that I had. I made a whole package of 126,000 XP in just a week. And that by just drawing runes. Even though I almost stayed indoors the whole damn week. I still will call it a win. Since I already got the goods, on what should I spend them on? Danzel asked himself while looking through this whole status. There were many chooses to pick from. Should he upgrade these skills? Buy more rune knowledge? Or simply increase my class level? 
Hmm. I should probably stick to my previews plan rather than spend everything in a single thing. Clicking in the skill I wanted, I pressed the upgrade button. Curse of Vigor has increased from LV.1 to LVL.10. The skill Curse of Vigor reached this maximum level. Curse of Vigor LV.10 turns into Curse of Exhaustion LV.1. Curse of Exhaustion, a curse intended to exhaust one to these limits. It makes the victim of this curse lose more stamina and slowly draining this energy. If the curse it s place enough long enough it s starting to drain the very vitality of the unfortunate being hit by the spell. Until they become a mummy. Damn, a whole another level of improvement. With the 32400 XP that I used, I could even say that this is my greatest by till yet. Danzel nodded to himself. As the preview planned to get, Undeath Corruption LV.1, 20% discount to get the Curse of Vigor to max level. In the results, though I gained far more than I thought I would. Although the Undeath Corruption LV.1 was expensive to get it was still worth it. With now 98,225 XP left in my storage, I felt tempted to push it all into my class's level. But there was still one single skill that I wanted to max out too. Even though I currently am in a safe spot, Letting my strongest skill, Wind Blade, rot in LV, 3 would be a crucial mistake if I find myself in a fight, but it's so damn expensive. Upgrading it from LV.3 to LV, 4 would be a whole 11,000 XP, and a 1,000 XP additionally for every single level. With a pained expression on this face, he can T make expression, Danzel pressed on the upgrade button with a shaky finger. Wind Blade has increased from LV.1 to LVL.10. The skill Wind Blade reached this maximum level. Wind Blade LV.10 turns into Gale Mana Blade LV.1. Gale Mana Blade, the advanced martial art of Wind Blade. It is sharper, stronger, and more durable than this previous inefficient technique. The mana inside the blade has been improved drastically. An overall improvement, it seems, huh? Not bad, not bad. With the knowledge slowly going through my mind, I felt like someone answered an easy question that I struggled to solve. How to draw mana into my sword faster and with more efficiency was solved by just upgrading the skill. If I were to use the Gale Mana Blade, now it would have double the range and speed of my previews one. If I had any complaints, it would probably be that the skill didn't T get any special abilities like the Curse of Vigor did. Maybe that asked the difference between magic and martial arts. After throwing himself in these thoughts and finding no answer to this question, he took the last peak in status. Status. Name. Rue Danzel. Level. 20. Class. Undead Guardian LV1. Subclass. Runesmith of Undeath LV.1. Health. 3355-3355. Mana. 484-484. Attribute points. Zero. Attributes, Strength 90, Agility 70, Intelligence 44, Endurance 61. Talents, Superior Undead, Sin of Wrath, Reinforced Soul, Superior Unique Concionis, Rune Vision, Dead Rune Knowledge. Skills, Intermediate Weapon Master LV.1, Undeath Corruption LV.1, Dash LV.1, Shield Bash LV.4, Gale Mana Blade LV.1, Sense Danger LV.3, Curse of Exhaustion LV.1, Piercing LV.1. Remark, a skilled undead of superior strength. Though you completely merging your life force with your undeath nature, you now became an undead fueled with pure dead mana and hate on the living. Such an achievement can only be seen by either talented or long-lived undead. XP, 225. Ack. Seeing how in an instant 98,000 XP were gone like they were in T there in the first place, I couldn't T help but groan in the pain that my wallet had felt. I should probably start solely leveling my classes the next time I got my hands in some XP. I guess I should start making some runes to dash. Asterisk knock, knock. Hearing the knocking on my door, I subconsciously turned my head towards the opposite side of the door. Seriously. Looking at the light coming out of the window, my body shook slightly. How? Seeing how I once again lost myself in time, I felt a sense of dread inside of me. How much longer would I had stayed inside here if I weren't he disturbed? 
Hey, Danzel. I come already out. I got something to tell you, Garak said behind my door. Coming. Shaking this head from these thoughts, Danzel got up from this sight and opened the door. Looking at the serious face that he was making, Danzel frowned slightly. So, did call me to make some more runes? Just that you know I got some item already ready to be carved upon. Danzel pointed out at one chest with some swords of different sizes. Shaking this head, Garak brought some keys out and gave them to him. Those are. It's the keys for the workshop. I came here to tell you that I will have to go out and buy some more supply before I can some new stuff. So you're saying that you will be gone for a day, right? Daniel asked while this glance was on the keys. Basically, yes. I gave you the keys in case you were interested to go outside for once. Garak replied. Sure. Although I don't think that I need to tell you that, but make sure to lock the door before leaving. Hmph. Get lost already. Danzel scoffed out loudly. All right then, I will see you tomorrow. With the dwarf no more, I simply looked at the keys and the door of my room with a complicated expression. He can't make one. I guess taking a break wouldn't hurt much. Wow, this thing is so fun to use. Danzel said while seeing the keys being held by some ethereal blue arms. Asterisk tick. Locking the door of the workshop, I imminently canceled the spell, mana arms, with an internal command. The spell works as it was written in the scroll. The flexibility and speed are good, but the weight limit is kind of annoying. Putting the cloak that was given to me by Garak around me, I went out to finally take a break from those four walls surrounding me the whole time. Garak has already left since the morning and by now it was already evening. My decision to come out now was the current time has the less amount of people walking outside. That, and the fact that I wanted to get those badly mana arms, to PLA, I mean to train with them. And for the penniless me who had no XP to show, I decided to work just enough to buy my second actually spell. Surprisingly though, the spell cost even less than Curse of Vigot had. By just making two runes I managed to learn and buy the skill directly for the total price of 1500 XP. Compared to Curse of Vigot, that was 3500 XP, it was cheap. As for the reason why I had some guesses, but no definitive answer in hand. One of them was that the spell was simply inferior to another. The stronger the better, right? Well, if we consider the status of my it would more likely be the stronger the more expensive. Another guess was that the quality of the scroll was better with better quality ink is written and paper. Nonetheless, I could try to figure the reason why. Doing that though would be too bothersome. Finding a mage to make a bad and a good quality scroll of the same spell sounds too much work even for me. Maybe if I somehow get an opportunity in the future, but for now that idea is scratched out from my to-do list dash. Crap, here I am trying to take a break while thinking of working again. I even caught a bad habit. Saying that, Danzel came to a sudden halt. Hmm, what is going? Looking in front of him, many people were standing there looking at two guys arguing. Hey, hey, you know what s going on, a nearby man of the crowd said. Did you just came? A merchant from the Union and a foreigner had their carriages crashed together and now is blocking the road, replied another man beside him. Upon hearing from the nearby people about what seemed to happen, I frowned slightly. Sigh, I guess I will have to find another path. Turning this head behind, Danzel saw more and more people standing in the crow. Looking left and right, he was a small opening between two houses. If I remember right beyond, that path should be the slums that Oliver bought me. After giving it a thought, I decided to go on that path. I might as well take my break and see the beautiful walls there. To the houses between this path blocked all sunlight, which made the whole path be engulfed by darkness. Of course, for me, such a thing didn't he even bother me. Heck, since my race itself has perfect night vision, sometimes recognizing how dark a room is proving to be a challenge. Asterisk splash, splash. The previous road made out of cut stone was no more. Instead, this path seemed to abandon fully made of dirt. Every step that I made left marks of my boots on the dirt. Ugh, cleaning this will be a boda dash. Before Dantel was even able to finish the sentence, a sudden feeling of danger came directly from behind me. What? Danzel turned around with hastening while pulling Varen from the sheath. Asterisk crack. A small blade dug through my armor directly to my right ribs and breaking two of them. Heh, you quite the resilient aren't you? 
said a cloaked figure with a mocking grin on this face. Although him breaking some of my few ribs made me lose around 600 HP, that didn't he stop me at all. Asterisk Sheen. With Danzel drawing this Varen out, he turned around and used this new skill, Gale Mana Blade, towards this attacker. Oh, seeing that, the cloaked figure half-body was engulfed in shadows which made him move like a snake and slip right to my other side before the air blade was about to cut him in half. The upgrade air blade carved the sides of the buildings like a sharp blade cutting tofu. The cut in itself wasn't that deep inside the walls, but if you consider that the walls are made out of stones it's already lethal enough. With me being wide open, the cloaked man of course didn't he let this opportunity go and aimed this dagger in hand directly at my shoulder bone. That s at least what he thought. As I realized early that my air blade wouldn't he get him through this weird movement ability. I raised my foot early to kick him at the stomach. Surprised at my kick, the cloaked man put this attack on hold and blocked my kick with this dagger that was supported by both these hands. Seeing that he was pushed back by around a half meter, the cloaked man's grin disappeared with a frown to replace this grin. You are quite strong and flexible. How was he able to move this body so well without feeling any pain the cloaked man thought internally? Usually, when you add lots of strength into your muscle to either run faster or swing something with more strength, and then suddenly halting that process the muscles in one's body will receive extreme burden. Worst case, the burden can be enough to break someone's. Being with no muscles and a strengthened body from these attributes. Such a problem didn't he exist for the undead Danzel. Physical pain? What is that? Looking at the cloaked figure, Danzel with this cold voice asked, Who are you? Gripping Varen with both these hands and taking this posture towards the guy in front of him, Danzel started to realize mana into Varen, ready to send another, Gale Mana Blade, towards this cloaked man. So annoying. Hey, curse. can T we already kill this guy? Who is he talking to? Asked Danzel himself. But this question soon got answered. Of course not, you idiot. This guy might know where the runesmith might be. Coming literally out of the shadows, a much older man with a cloak around him appeared behind me. What surprised Danzel, though, was that those guys were searching for a runesmith. A.K.A. me. Based on what the guy just said, they don T know that I am the one runesmith to what are you guys talking about? What Rinsmith? Let us play the fool and see. Messing with those guys that use what looks like dark magic ISNT would be more than a pain in the hashtag S that it was worth. And I can T feel any pain. There is no point in playing dumb. We have already seen you guys leave with the money of the auction from the ruined weapons. As long you tell us where the dwarf Rinsmith had gone, we might let you live. Ah, uh, crap. Danzel cursed internally. Hey, curse. You promised me that I was allowed to kill him after we got our information out of him. Danzel. Curse. I guess there is no other option than fighting. Bringing to an end upon the awkward silence between us three, I imminently turned around and pointed my finger at the cloaked man who was apparently named Curse. Recognizing the biggest threat being Curse with going into the shadows, I imminently cast Curse of Exhaustion on him. A dark green ethereal mist came out of Danzel's hands and flew directly as curs with immense speed. Wadash. Without being able to respond, the curses successfully hit the old man. I didn't him just because I felt he was the more dangerous one, but because of me being able to sense the people under my curse spell. Danzel hoped that when he goes into the shadows, he would be able to track him down. T that's a curse. Curs exclaimed out loud while looking horrified. You dare to ignore me. Seeing their target facing this back towards him made him feel like he was looked down upon. The younger cloaked man dashed in my direction to take a piece out of me. Moving a step to the left, the dagger hit my armor and slide to the side while creating some sparks. Raising Varen up high, Danzel swung the long sword directly aimed at this head. Unfortunately for Danzel, though, the young man slipped just about he was to be hit with the same shadow technique. TCH, I can't use Varen at this best with so small space to work with. Denzel mumbled to himself. Being surrounded with stone walls by each side required me to put much more care to not hit the walls while swinging a sword by the length of Varen. Damn it, I should even ask Garak to make me a shield. Regrets stayed regrets of the past. And into the now current present. 
The fight between me and the two cloaked men begun. Asterisk thing. Sounds of metal echoed through the abandoned path. TCH, thick bastard. Using what Danzel called shadow movement, the younger one came towards Danzio blind spot while he was distracted by this college in a sword battle. Unfortunately for him, though, the moment he tried to slash at this armored mercenary, the blades simply slide off to the side while creating sparks. Seeing that he lost yet another opportunity, the young man decided to create some distance and try this luck on this next chance. No, you don't. Gathering this mana and spreading it through this whole body, he disappeared the old man and used this new skill, Dash, to give chase. Danzel body glowed with ethereal green mana with these eyes glowing the most like an enraged beast. Holding Varen up to the shoulders, with this bloodlust never-ending, he swung it towards the young cloaked man. Asterisk bomb. Hey, old man. Do something. Engulfing this body until this pelvis with shadows, the man S moved a step faster before this face could meet the mad blade. Although he was confident in dodging this mercenary rush towards him, the bloodlust that this guy let out made him feel anxious. What the man didn't he expect, though, was that this mercenary rush would continue after this big attack. Dragging this blade through the ground, Danzel used the same tactic that a certain goblin had used on him before, using a skill multiple times. Danzel originally attacked using Dash, though made him lose most of this momentum. This, though, didn't he stop him, though, of abusing this body by using Dash yet again. With this body being one of the undead, he didn't he feel the actual side effects of this teaching with only this mind getting the burden. Currently, though Danzel didn't he care about this headache. He saw the young cloaked like a big mosquito that was right to this left air the whole time. He was so annoyed by him that this blood lust covered the pain that was happening in this head. Asterisk WRRH Chach. You crazy bot our dash. A G Ch -h -h, leaving a trail in the ground. Danzel quickly closed up the distance. Being just about three meters away from him, he guided this mana in Varen and used Gale Mana Blade while dragging the sword to the ground. Swinging the sword, the air blade ground through the ground, raising whatever was in this path towards the young man, be it garbage, dirt, or even small stones. They soon became a wave of wind going through the whole front path. Ah! Uh. The cloaked young figure covered this head with both his arms to protect himself from the sharp garbage or stones that were flying towards him. He tried to resist the wind that was made. Alas, the wind was too stronger. Cough, cough, this bastard. Dare to throw trash at him, huh? The cloaked figure curses suddenly came to halt when he saw the armored mercenary with menacing green glowing eyes looking at him and this sword coming ever closer to this neck. All the colors on the young man's face were drained instantly with only a thought showing in this mind. Death, even if you were to use this shadow movement. In this current position and the blade coming closer by the SEC, it would be too late. And no, the young man cried out with tears forming in his eyes. And as if the gods heard this plea, the menacing sword changed this direction to mercenary side. Asterisk think. Oh, too bad. You think I even forgot about you. Looking beside the armored mercenary this senior holding a straight contest between them, he almost wanted to kiss the old geezer. You idiot! What are you standing there for? Hearing Kerr's call, he quickly activated shadow movement and made the distance between the two clashings. Looking at these legs shaking out of fear, the young man gritted these teeth with hatred. I will kill him. No, I have to give this guy the most miserable death that there is. I even let that bug escape. Danzel, though frustrated. You sure noble to save you subordinate in times in need. But do tell me, though, aren't you tired? Ho ho, I wonder what you are talking about, Kurz said with a grin on this face. Pushing our blades, we both created some distance between us. Although he was playing at call, Danzel did notice the sweat that was forming in Kurz's head. You can keep your activity as long as you want. I don't care. Do know, though, that messing with me was and will be your last mistake. For started, I am the runesmith that you guys are looking for. You sure sound confident. Dark mana came through the old man's body and this shadow which made it look lifelike. Although the man's current mana looked similar to my natural dead mana. In reality, they couldn't be more different. Although they have the same color and have some similar attributes like the name says. 
Dead mana is dead and dark mana for itself was living mana which was one of the elements of the world. And the name dead mana doesn't t-point towards the cease of the existence of that current mana, but rather than the attribute that it holds which is the attribute of the dead which is the very base of every undead creature. But dark mana was different. It allowed someone to manipulate these surroundings and almost penetrate anything except constructs made out of holy or light mana. In short, dark mana was the mastery of trickery and assassination with some certain other unique ways to use it. And the current curse is using one of the unique ways of dark magic. It has been a while since I moved those old bones of mine. With this sword in this hand, curse dashed towards Danzel at full speed. But after this fourth step, Kurz sunk into the shadow. Sensing the danger and the cursed place on Kurz, Danzel quickly turned around and blocked Kurz that appeared and disappeared as quickly. He is faster. Before Danzel was able to sense this new location, the same thing happened to my right side. But this time he wasn't he able to block it. Asterisk cracked. Looking at the cut that Kurz made in my left chest area, I removed every useless thought in my mind letting me concentrate on the current enemy in hand. And this same assault went on. Jumping from one side of the shadows to another, he slowly managed to land some hits on me which didn't t damage me that much as they didn't t hit any of my bones, except that one time that I was surprised. That guy is clearly using this shadow warp the whole time. But is that even possible? How can someone cast the same kind of skill so many times without getting tired? His having a mortal body makes it even less believable. Is it the same skill or two different ones? Danzel, of course, was puzzled by the man using the same skill for the eighth time on him. Even though with the help of the trade of all curses and the sense danger skill, he still was somewhat able to block most of the strikes. But this armor had limits. Thankfully, he covered this upper body with some old cloth he found in Garak's home. Otherwise, the secret of Danzel being undead would even go out of the box. And the last thing that Danzel now wanted was for those guys to run away and rat me out to the whole capital. If that were to happen, I might as well get out from this place and pursue my first plan. On how things looked now, though, he didn't wouldn't need to do this, though. At any moment, he should. Coming out of the shadows with sweat in the body, the now exhaust old figure clashes swords with me. Asterisk tink. Kid, do it now. Kurz screamed out loud. Confused at the words of the old man, I was soon reminded by a sense of danger coming out of me. Right. There was another guy. Pushing the exhausted curs to the ground, I hastily turned my whole body around. Turning around, the only thing that Danzel saw was a dagger coming directly to this face. Asterisk crack. Piercing through my helmet, t first a sense of weakness came at me. Ha ha ha. That what you get messing with me. Seeing the before terrifying mercenary takes a step back and losing this footing he almost wanted to start laughing like a maniac. Even though he wasn't supposed to kill him, he didn't care. You should even listen to us instead of play the big boss dash. As the armored mercenary Danzel seemed like he was about to fall. These legs took this previous footing and the arm that he let the Varen sword out quickly grabbed the young man's head. With this dead and affinity mana coming from this body, Danzel let out a burst of maniacal laughter. Hee <laughs> hee. MHHM. Uh huh. You annoying fly. You aren't getting away this time. Gripping this mouth even tighter than before, he raised him high from the ground while the man was flailing to get away from this cold grip. Danzel brought the man high enough until the shadows from the man's leg slowly got ripped off. This action looked similar to how you would uproot the weed from your garden. The man's face took a turn for the worse with his face becoming blue, being in the process of suffocation. The moment the armored mercenary loosens this grip, he felt buoyant about this situation. But soon this hope was crushed. Letting this grip go, Danzel putting this whole strength in this fist. He showed a punch in the cloaked man's face with this steel glove. The fist that had the strength of a normal adult man swinging a sludge hammer with this whole strength sent the young man flying towards the wall. Asterisk cracked. Gah. Hitting this head to the stone walls, the man falls like a broken puppet who had these strings cut off to the ground. Blood oozing out of both this mouth and head. Groans of pain came out of the young man out of the pain he never had experienced in this whole life before. He tried to stand on his knees, only for him to fall again. 
At the end of this miserably struggle, he only managed to turn this body around and to look at the sky up high. The sun was already setting down with the night circle to soon come. The young man that was named Herathea started to think twelve years back in time to the similar night that changed this life for the better. He who had the name of Herathea's was once a nameless orphan living in those abandoned slums that had to scrap for food that even rats had avoided. Like most kids in the slums, he was an unwanted child who was thrown away by this mother who was a prostitute working in the red district of this capital. With neither of these parents, the young orphan had to fight for this life this whole life just to get some grumps of bread in this mouth to appease this hunger. The kid who wasn't even at this seven years old was forced to kill another one in the same situation as him just for food. Herathias never regret this choice back then, but he also never forgot. With every day the kid that was supposed to play with a stick in this hand, as if it were the most priced artifact out there started to get colder and more uncaring of human life. Not even this own. That all though changed when he was at this ten years. In a fight in the slums where he killed the ones that stole this food, a man appeared. This man offers him a place to stay out of the cold days, a job to earn money, and the power to protect himself. At last, even a name that he can claim this own was given to him. Of course, at first, he didn't believe that man that wanted to recruit him in that organization. But after he was beaten close to death, the man's words never sounded more believable than then. Although the things he had done would seem with the most disgust. He didn't care. That s where life lead him after all. If there was someone to blame, then it was this very life. Asterisk Thurid. Upon hearing the loud noise, Herathias turned this day's sight away from the sky towards in front of him. There was a figure wearing dark clothes with green glowing eyes. Maybe it was the cause of the pain he received, but what he saw was a skull glaring directly at him. He felt confused as to why he was seeing something like this. He thought he was hallucinating or something the like. In the end, the only thing that made sense to him was... Death came to claim Dash, without even letting Herathias finish, a punch came to this head. Turning this head into a destroyed pasta, you received 5,500 XP. Ha 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 ha. Danzel laughter was engulfed in poor madness. Even though this enemy died, Danzel continued throwing punches at the lifeless body in front of him. Each punch broke bones while turning the flesh one with the ground. The amount of bloodlust that was put into each punch was disgusting in Kerr's view. The previous calm mercenary who could predict every shadow warp of this turned out of nowhere into a bloodlusting beast. There's is no doubt, this guy shows the ability of a berserker, Kerr said while thinking if he should leave or not. If Danzel were to hear this, he would even question the mental health of this old man. Of course, both of them would be mistaken. The reason why Kurz thought Danzel was a berserker was because of this sudden come of power and what seemed like a loss of sanity. Those things were the most characteristic points of a berserker. A heavy fighter with an incredible amount of vitality and insanely powerful. What both didn't he know though was that the undead gets quite aggressive when they are hit in their head, especially skeleton-type undead. After all, that was most of the undead weakness except for some of the special types of undead like the vampires of liches. Both of those two have their own set of weaknesses like their heart or the liches phylactery. But for the usually out-of-the-mill undead, once the head is gone you are out. With the sin of wrath and Danzel eye socket being cut with almost the skull showing some cracks. The usual anger that Danzel felt with just sin of wrath was nothing to the hatred he was feeling right now. Asterisk that. Huh, I have even done it now. Danzel said after regaining these senses. Looking at this glove's metal being misshaped, he could already feel the pain of this wallet. TCH, I sure made quite the mess with him. Following your instincts sure is dangerous. Ignoring the blood splashed all over me, he turned around to see Kurz standing there with a conflicted look. So what will you do, run away? Danzel said he a mocking tone. Kurz grid these teeth in silence. Turning this gaze towards the Varen in the ground, Kurz didn't he know what to do. These instincts were telling me to run away, but this logic said otherwise. He had several reasons not to run. One of them was this curse that this mercenary had placed on him. Being one of the band schools of magic, there was little information about them. At first, he didn't he think much of the curse as it seemed that it made him a little more tired. But after some time, he started feeling this vitality going away. 
What worried him the most was that this curse was a permanent one. There have been many stories about how a curse that seemed nothing at the first turned out to have a crippling effect on this victim or right of cause death. If that were such a curse, he would be screwed for good. If he didn't end this now, this life would be in danger. Killing the caster of the curse would be only this choice. The other reason he hesitates is cause the current mercenary is unarmed. Even if the mercenary is stronger physically by just a little bit, he was confident to win with this sword in hand. Leaving also meant abandoning this current mission. Abandoning the single clue of finding the runesmith would bring me more of a punishment. I have to do it. Damn it. Removing this cloak curse dashed towards Danzel. I shouldn't have used all my mana. Feeling this every step get heavier and heavier, Curse just realized how worse the curse got. Oh, you are approaching me. Stretching my hand towards the running assassin, I cast my spell. Mana arms. Two ethereal blue hands made of mana appeared behind Curse unbeknownst. One arm trapped the handle of Varen while the other gripped the blade. Using a mental command, the arms flew towards the directions of my hand. With the now exhausted curse through my curse, the Varen came into my hands. With our three meters distance from each other, I guided mana through all of my body and used the skill, dash, towards curse. Curse, surprised by the blade of the mercenary coming to this hand, tries to force whatever little mana he had left to use, shadow warp. Alas, with limited mana it was too slow. The Varen blade slashed towards the belly of curse. Removing this upper body with this lower part, Danzel cut him in half. With the two parts of Kurz on the ground and this blood painting the walls, he died with a look of unwillingness in him. You received 7,500 XP. Nothing is useless if it's used the correct way. Giving a hive up to the floating mana arms, I quickly left the crime scene before someone was to investigate all the noise that we made. And after 10 minutes that Danzel left the two bodies in that abandoned path, a man with silver armor and a golden white cloak appeared, leading a group of soldiers with him. Arriving at the path where Danzel's battle had taken place, the soldiers behind the man gasped out of surprise and disgust. Both sides of the walls had a long rough cut in them with the path in itself faring no better. It looked like a sudden whirlwind had appeared and created a mess over there. What disturbed them the most were the two lion bodies in the ground. With one body showing this inner guts for the others to see and near that already gruesome sight, there was another bloody mess to what the soldiers guessed was a previous human being. Just thinking of what this poor guy had even done to experience such gruesome fate made cold sweat run down their backs. They wouldn't wish for anyone to experience what this man had experienced, even if they were the bastard who cheated on their wives. Compared to some of the soldiers who started to throw up to the side of the road, the man with silver armor was unfazed by such sight. Sir Lewis, just who might have done such a thing? A soldier asked the silver armored man. Walking towards the two corpses in silence, the man named Lewis gripped the head and lifted it off the now dead curse, which results in the insides of the corpse flowing further outside and make the soldiers who just stopped puking puke one more round again. Giving a consolation look to these fellow soldiers, the man asked in confusion, Sir, what are you, Dash? Kurz Shatman. Huh? What does she mean, sir? This very man is named Kurz Shatman, one of the notorious contracted assassins that had made a name here in Burns. He left no traces behind these deeds. Heartlessly letting the head fall to the ground, Lewis turned around towards the bloody pasta. And, even though that guy is unrecognizable, I bet he is Herathias, the apprentice of these bastards down there. He recently got noticed by the church. They weren't two men that would be missed. Lewis said with a casual tone. Even if the death of two well-known assassins were nothing to Lewis, the soldiers weren't tea on the same page. Kickers the assassin. Why would such a figure be here? And dead at that too. The soldiers upon hearing that were shocked with only a few ones who didn't tea know who the man who died here was. Of course, they were, since one figure that many noble had feared before died in an abandoned street that nobody walked before. If it weren't tea for the fact of the loud noises and the complaints of the nearby merchants, they would even never found out that such a figure died a dog's death here. The nobles who had used hundreds of gold to hire magic casters as bodyguards would even cry if they didn't tea hear of this. 
They would even waste their own money to protect themselves against someone who had already died. Kurz Chapman was so much feared not because of this combat capably, but rather from this shadow warp magic which he was so infamous about. After all, with no magic caster to detect or block Kurz magic, the nobles would be at the mercy of Kurz. Even if they were powerful enough to resist the assassination, Kurz could simply hide and hear every single secret from them inside the shadows. Just the idea of whatever you said could be leaked from the color of your underwear to illegal was already quite tiresome. And for such a man that brought many nobles' nightmares to die in such a place was surprising. Esser, could C have any idea on who might have caused it? With a frown on his face as Lewis replied. Sadly, nothing comes to mind by just looking at that. What I know, though, is that the one that did this had done is a big favor. I see. What would be our order, sir? said the same soldier. Go report this case to the higher-ups. As for the two corpses over here, let me handle them. Be but. That's an order. I was given full authorization by the general himself, and you still doubt me? With a pale expression on this face, the soldier salutes while saying, Sir, yes, sir. Leaving the confused soldier go, the preview's emotionless face of Lewis fell apart with this frown turning for the worst. Turning this head around, Lewis cursed it out loud. Damn it. To think that such creatures would appear inside the walls. Simply unbelievable. The reason why he let the soldiers go wasn't that he wanted to handle the corpse. But rather than faint miasma lurking around the corpse of Herathias, such a thing to appear here could only mean one thing. The culprit who'd done this wasn't a human, but rather an undead walking among the humans. If such thing were to go out in public, it would cause chaos everywhere. That dumbass of assassin, he probably made an enemy with those parasites or something. Bringing this sword out of the sheath, golden light started to engulf it with the next meant the light turning into bright yellow flames. Holy fire. Piercing slightly their bodies, the golden flame started to eat at their bodies and the nearby miasma that had gathered around. After making sure that no traces were left behind, Lewis walked out of the abandoned road. I will have to report this to the church immediately before something worse happens. Although two assassin Diang was considered a good thing for everyone, Lewis didn't, as an undead being inside the capital was enough of a red flag, since an undead being here never spelled good news. With many stories revolving around necromancers bringing the casual plague out or a damn undead army made by the citizen remains. Damn it, yesterday was even the timeline to pick my long-waited reward too. Let's hope they don't put me up to work in the name of the paladin's code. Lewis, one of the paladins serving the goddess, mumbled to himself. Currently in the slums. It has been quite a while since I even came here, Danzel said while wetting a cloth in this hand. The sun had long come down with the night taking this place. He was back in that rundown house where he spent this first rainy night out, with the blood of the previous battle still being there. Running out for the people wouldn't have made me question as a psychopath right off the bat. The first thing you had to do was to remove all those blood stains in this armor and hands. Although it felt awkward using the cloves cause of the misshapen, it wasn't all that bad. TCH, my armor is pretty roughed up too. Looking at the tens and searches in the armor, I could only sigh out loud. Asterisk sigh, how great would even be if my armor had the Varen runes. I guess mourning over spilled milk would not bring me any further. The man named Kurz was the third one in this opinion who could use magic. With the shaman to Rafa, they both had simplistic and straightforward magic spells which could even be stopped or dodged. But this guy made me look at magic in a totally new light. The ability to stay in the shadows and teleport around sounded really incredible. If it weren't for the fact of using the curse with a sense of danger, I would long be dead. That's how powerful this guy's skill was. If he hasn't run out of mana juice, in the end, there, I would long be dead or lose the element of surprise with my mana arms. Talking about mana arms, he was currently using that very skill to hold the wet cloth and clean my armor slowly and precisely. Those people who called this thing trash might even be retarded. As the saying went, for arms are better than two arms. Or was it heads? Anyways, Danzel was currently thinking about what to do. Return to the workshop or leave the capital. Leaving would mean finding a new house with no weapons to make runes, but also safer. Staying on the other hand would change nothing. 
Having a house to stay out of raining days, a reliable XP source, and training my runesmithing skills at the same time. Although it sounds great and all, the danger behind it must be considered. Remembering what the yep guys told me, they didn't seem to know that I am the runesmith. If they had known, they wouldn't have tried to kill me. I think. Which let me know that they weren't sent by Garak to eliminate me or anything. My best guess was that either the auction house betrayed these customers or that we were trailed back to the workshop after we got the money. Sigh, I will have to meet up with Garak and have a talk about this. As for now, I will have to somehow find a way on how I should spend the night in this place without getting bored. With another day embracing the capital of Burns, currently in the middle district where all kinds of merchants and shops were. In a shop that had a sign of a middle and some cloth, a man wearing a black cloak walked out of the shop. Or to be more specifically an undead. Thanks for coming, Doc. A charming voice waved at the leaving customer. Ugh, I should even go to one of those merchants instead of here. Holding this newly bought black cloak that was made from Dark Shepherd's wool or whatever the woman called that thing and quickly left this place. Although Danzel didn't he like to spend this gold on pretty much anything, he soon realized through the amount of gold that he had. It was getting to the point that he couldn't he carry more than 100 gold coins with him. Any more more and the self invented rib bag would break through the weight alone. That by itself annoyed him to the teeth. The great thing about this bag inside these ribs was the secrecy and security of the items that were put inside it. After all, what other place would be safer than inside your body itself? Even if they wanted to steal your stuff, what would they even do? Put their hands inside of me and drag their loot out? Damn, just thinking about it already gives me the chills. The first solution that Danzel thought of was some small bags and put them around this waist. But that idea was quickly dismissed as the amount of gold that he had couldn't he be resolved by a small bag. Without any solutions in hand, he just right have decided to spend some of this gold. Thus, the reason for him being in this tailor shop. As clueless as Danzel was, walking inside that shop gave him more of a headache than it was worth. He just went inside to get himself some actual leather to upgrade this bag and a cloak to go back to the workshop. Nothing more, nothing less. What he thought would be a five minute of going in turned out to be an hour long of poor torture. The moment I mentioned to the girl running the shop that I wanted to buy a dark cloak and some lethier, she bought out a whole box of all kinds of different black cloaks. No matter what she showed me, I couldn't he find the difference between them. It was to the point that she asked me if I was colorblind or not. Lady, black is black. There was nothing else. What made him more awkward was when she asked me to take my armor off to take the measurements, which I could tell was a lie. I wasn't sure why, but her eyes showed a hint of greed inside of them. It got to the point that I forced the money in her hand and run off after saying some excuse with the goods in my hand. The leather that I bought wasn't one of good quality compared to the cloak. The reason why that was the case I would use it only to try out is it would work on not to replace the cloth material with leather. If I were to buy the best studs right of the bad, I would even waste them. After all, giving a beginner blacksmith the rarest, or there is to make a weapon, is beyond wasteful. That, and because fixing and making a bag has become somewhat a hobby of mine, mainly to pass time. As the saying says, practice makes the master. The cloak was differently tough. Coming from a monster called the Dark Shepherds that weren't common in this kingdom made it rare and expensive. It was a monster closely resembling a sheep, but with long legs that made them at least five meter tall and dark wool. Although they were looking adorable as a normal sheep would do. That was only on the day. Dark Shepherd were a hunter of the night. Their gaze could use an ability called Dark Sleep, which was hypnosis. Looking at the eyes of that creature spelled doom for whoever was unlucky enough to meet this gaze. This creature would force its prey into a deep sleep before calling this herd to see this achievement. What afterward would happen was, not that appetizing. Let's hope that this cloak does what the woman said it does. If not, I will go back request a refund wherever she wants or not. Cloak of Night, a cloak made of durable wool of a shepherd. Holding one of the shepherd traits, the cloak will reduce the wearer's presence only by little when it's night. All right, this should be goon enough. Leaving the streets, Danzel made this way towards the Oru, fire smith, while covering this face. Reaching the workshop, what he saw surprised him. What the hell happened here? The door in front had a big hole in the middle where the sign on top looked like it was burned. 
Making sure that no one suspicious had followed him, Danzel went inside with his hand ready to draw Varen out. Garak, where you? With my cold voice echoing through the walls. There was silence. Weird, he should already be here, but did he left after seeing this whole MES, hmm? Asterisk, ba, ba, ba. Running from the stairs with these short legs, Garak appeared with a messy beard and this hammer. You bastard Danzel. I told you to lock the goddamn door. What did I give you these keys for? Running straight at me, he swung this hammer in my direction with an enraged expression. Daniel reached out this hand and grabbed the hammer with this hand alone, surprising the enraged dwarf. First of all, calm down. And secondary did lock the door. Huh? You didn't tea. This genuinely shocked look kind of pissed me off. Does this dwarf think I am stupid not to lock the door? That ISNT important right now. What did you say? What could be more important than someone breaking into my shop? Sigh. The thing is. Removing my hand from this hammer, I started to explain the encounter that I had with Does Two Guys yesterday. When he realized that I wasn't he joking one bit, this face went as pale that a corpse would. T tell me the truth. Are you serious? The dwarf said with a shaking voice. Well, unless you think I made these cuts on the armor that I bought myself. Lifting my cloak showing all the cuts that my armor received through the fight seemed convincing enough for Garak. Ah, I knew that this was going to happen for the hammer's sake. I knew that I should hasten our preparation. Damn it. Looking at the previous dwarf who cared so much about this shop throw the hammer at the ground and breaking the wooden floor made me question this mindset. Wait, you knew that this would happen? Danzel asked after thinking about what the little man just said. Of course I knew you, idiot. Are you that naive to think that no one will search for the second coming of a runesmith in the whole kingdom? Damn it, although it pisses me off that guy is right. I still haven T understood the significance the others hold of my runesmith class. I guess our partnership is over. Putting this cloak back on he turned around towards the door. Danzel, if you leave now you will die, Garak said. You, threatening me? No, I, understanding this mistake Garak quickly tried to explain. Without being able to finish this, a hand grabbed this throat and lifting him to the ear. D. Danzel, hear me, oh you dash. And how exactly am I going to die, little dwarf? Danzel tightens slightly this grip while realizing some blood lust in the surroundings. T. They will never allow for a runesmith to leave the kingdom. Willing or not, they probably have someone already in the gates keeping guard to find someone dash. Asterisk bomb. Letting the dwarf fall to the ground, I moved in a circle while cursing internally. I should even know that things look too good to be true. Damn it, I should even left once I bought the armored. Knowing how much shit I have a step on, I tried to calm my mind. There is no point complaining about spilled milk. The deed was done, and what I had to do was damage control. Well, what is your plan? I asked the dwarf now completely calm. Cough, cough, Don T. Worry. I already prepared another place for us, no, for you to work in. Garak said hurriedly, clearly out of breath. He was convinced that this guy would choke him to death. I was mistaken to think of this guy as someone with a similar occupation. Feeling an up closer this bloodlust is too intense. A place for me to work, you say? Yes, but it will be more like buying you a base of operation. I will bring you the weapons, and when you finished making the runes I will take them back and sell them. It will allow you to hide your traces on guys like you met yesterday. Standing opposite to each other, both of them were silent. After a long pause between both of them, Danzel turned around. All right, when will it be ready? The dwarf replied with a tone of relief. I can show you after someone come pick something up. Before that, it will become difficult. Is it that important? Can T you just tell him to come tomorrow or something? Danzel, of course, was annoyed by this. Knowing that another group of assassins could show up at any moment, he was nowhere comfortable with staying inside this building anymore. Unfortunately, I can T. This guy is. Asterisk carriage GHHH. With the door screeching and opening, a man with silver armor appeared with an aura that bought Peach to others' mind. You talking about me? Oh! Sir Lewis, we have been expecting you. Garak that one second ago was all nervous put on this same vicious smile when he first had met me. But I didn't he notice the sudden change of Garak. Or rather, my whole attention was aimed towards the man named Lewis. 
The aura that would be considered pure and bringing someone's mind at peace was to me the total opposite. It was like a towering bright light that made me dread to make any movements. Currently, two total opposites of feelings were going inside my mind. One side told me to draw my sword and pouch on him with everything I got. The other side of me though told me that if I were to move, I would die. If one side represents the hatred of me, the other side was the dread facing him. I knew if I were to touch this light, I will be done for.